without addressing who's doing it, it's fucking hard, man. As Black History Month comes to an end, we want to highlight a local spoken word artist and educator. Here we have J.C. Futrell's poetry. And thank you so much for being here to really bring that to light for us. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure and a good morning and happy Sunday. Yeah, too. and your poetry it focuses primarily on diversity, equity, inclusion, and you're a national poetry slam champion. Yeah. So oh, Lord. Yeah. I'm almost darker than this here today. What inspired the whole poetry thing with you? You know, um, when I found uh, slam and performance poetry, it was uh, early 2000s. And I was looking for um, other creatives uh, that I could kind of like connect to. I was going through a really tough time. And I found myself wandering into the Mercury Cafe mm -hmm. on a Sunday night uh, for the open mic and the jam and then the poetry slam that I had never seen before. And I just fell in love with it um, almost immediately. I saw poets get up on stage and reveal their most um, vulnerable uh, uh, things in their lives and in their, their identities and how they saw themselves. And I immediately felt at home and wanted to be a part of that community. Yeah, and it can be so powerful, just poetry and spoken word and being able to express yourself that way. Absolutely. I see poetry as a, uh, a healing mechanism, a healing device vehicle. Um, I've connected with people from all over the world um, through the power of spoken word. And I truly believe um, that it is uh, kind of the, the, the great equalizer um, when it comes to being creative. So can you tell us about the poem that you're about to recite entitled Bricks? Yeah, Bricks is a poem that I wrote for the uh, first anniversary of the Black Resilience in Colorado Fund. Uh, that is a scholarship. The Black Resilience in Colorado Fund. Y'all Black, y'all glad is a trouble out there, man. <laughs> Yeah. Somebody needs to punch this fucker in the head just for wearing that stupid hat. This man mm -hmm. lives in an all-white apartment complex, guaranteed. And he fucking has a white girlfriend. Mm -hmm. uh, no, Shit. white boyfriend. Boy, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, <laughs> foundation uh, uh, uh program through the Denver Foundation. And we work primarily with organizations that uh, have a primarily uh, African-American uh, board or staff and uh, distribute services within African-American communities. And that first year, uh, we had given out more than a million dollars to 62 different organizations throughout the state of Colorado. So we're gonna put some information about that up right now. We're gonna put information on how you can find JC Futrell, and he is going to perform Bricks. Take it away. Thank you. My grandmother speaks like she had a gun in her lap. She had the pride of a Pullman porter in the hands of sharecroppers. She got a Jim Crow education in a one room schoolhouse, played hide and seek underneath trees that hung black bodies. She- oh, God, Jesus Christ. None of this is original. This guy just like copy and pasted all this shit from some fucking black power website. <laughs> Alex Haley memoirs and shit. What is wrong with these people, man? If someone kills this guy, it's going to be a sudden man. Guaranteed. If someone beats this guy, it's going to be a sudden man. If someone robs this guy, it's going to be a sudden man. Dude, goes, I would, I'll give somebody a couple packs of squares to take this guy out. If he fucking goes to prison and gets raped, it's going to be a sudden man. If he gets like the only thing really is like if he goes to Walmart and like he like cuts the line, he may get into an argument with a Karen or some shit like that. But most of the shit <laughs> that's gonna happen to him is gonna be a fucking son man. or some son sister. Fuck is he talking about? the pride of a Pullman porter in the hands of sharecroppers. She got a Jim Crow education in a one room schoolhouse, played hide and seek underneath trees that hung black bodies. She walked like everywhere led home. She raised babies to crawl, stand and walk upright, look a man in the eye and trust only in what you can touch. She spoke with the confidence of bullets and reminded me that there are power in books. The last thing that she taught me was that in order to find yourself, you had to get lost first. Edna Mosley, first black elected official to the Aurora, Colorado City Council. Mm -hmm.
bricks. Brick by brick, we have laid the foundation for our resilience. Don't tell me Colorado ain't got black folks. Used our own sweat and blood as the mortar to build. Don't tell me Colorado ain't got black folks. Barney Ford, runaway slave, gold rush baron, no Colorado statehood without him. They named the mountain he laid his claim to N-Word Hill. It took over a hundred years until it was renamed after him. Bricks lay the foundation for solid ground. Deerfield, Colorado, colored man's ghost town. 1910, Oliver Toussaint Jackson, namesake to the liberator of Haiti. He stacked bricks for a free colony. Did you know that one in every three cowboys was black? Homestead for former slaves and their children who had never no bondage and be the first to own themselves. Don't tell me Colorado ain't got black folk Juneteenth. Bricks, Madam C.J. Walker, first woman of any color to become a self-made millionaire and did it with hair care products. The first Crown Act paved the way for Leslie Harrod's fight for our braids, locks, twists, and curls. Bricks, Human Bookstore where I bought my first copy of the Madhu Natir. We have built the foundation on which we stand. A brick can be used to build a home or through the window of a courthouse justice for. We are giving our flowers for the ever living. Shorter AME, Cleo Parker Robinson, Black American West, the Rossonian, where my Aunt Charlotte would trade notes with Ella Fitzgerald, Green Book Landmark, Jack Kerouac wrote on the road there, my grandfather, delivered by the first Black female doctor west of the Mississippi, became a Tuskegee Airman. He couldn't climb over that mountain. So we just flew over it, bricks, Welton Street Cafe, coffee at the point, Gemini Tea Emporium, Cafe Nuba is hot and is black, slam Nuba, we cut heads, ink on the page as black as the folks on the stage, five points, where Jack Johnson, first black heavyweight champion of the world, said his right hook felt like getting hit with a brick. They couldn't beat him in the ring, so they beat him in court. Bricks, we take nothing for granted, bricks. Our foundation is concrete bricks. Our grave sites are the only places to find our names etched in stone bricks. Brick by brick, we claim our dignity and pave a way for others to build. Brick by brick, we are the masons of our own. Hold on, wait a second. He got a man back in our day. You couldn't do this, man. You had to recite the whole shit off the top of your head. Even he can't remember this much lie. <laughs> it's too much Yo. bullshit to remember. Yo, what the fuck, man? This is this whole generation is just fugazi in so many ways. Like that I was haven't been suicidal in a long time, man. This guy's pushing it. Dignity and pave a way for others to build. Brick by brick, we are the masons of our own destiny. Brick by brick, there is none more important than the hands that laid them. Black resilience in Colorado is. Charles Burrell is, Daddy Bruce is, Miss Zona is, Curtis Park is, Manual High School is, Whittier is, Cole is, an opportunity for us to make something from nothing, to lay the first bricks so that others may have a path to walk on themselves. Happy Black History Month. You know, what I can't stand about guys like that is they think like just because black people existed in an area, they did everything. <laughs> like, they we existed. are all dumber like, oh, now. We existed in Colorado. We made it. Like, what the fuck? Like, guys like that, it's so funny because they talk about revolution, but it's like, dude, you would just be food or a shield for somebody that actually knows how to shoot. Like, no matter what your opinion is about what happened in Black Wall Street, at least those black people were like World War One veterans and put up some kind of fight. Like, they just use that guy as a sandbag. To block bullets, you know, like the fuck, get out of here, dude. Yeah, 